In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. You're very welcome to the Brendan Option, coming to you courtesy of Immaculate Productions. I'm Father Brendan Kilcoyne. If you like our work, would you hit the subscribe button? Consider making a contribution on Patreon or PayPal. Would you uh, keep the constructive comments coming? And above all, keep us in your prayers. I want to share with you today a, a concern that's very much been growing in my mind over the last few years. One of the central duties for a parish priest um, is the offering of requiem masses for the dead. More often than not with the physical remains of the deceased person in the coffin before the altar. Sometimes, occasionally in the form of ashes. I discern in the way in which many funeral masses are conducted and in the things that I am sometimes asked for, a failure of nerve and of faith, perhaps very likely, on the parts both of, of priests and laity. Now this is discernible in different ways in various liturgical functions, I'm sorry to say. But it's very interestingly observable in funeral masses. They are becoming, in more and more as time passes, they are becoming more horizontal. They are becoming more a matter of the humanly social and not oriented towards the divine. I would question the extent to which many Catholics now believe in eternal life, in the last things taught by the Church in death, judgment, heaven or hell. I would seriously question that. And one of the telltale signs is the assumption and near obsession with the eulogy after Mass, after Communion. So it's not enough that a, that a sermon be preached in which the deceased person is also remembered. Now there has to be a talk given by somebody else later on. Sometimes two, maybe three speeches of human appreciation of the deceased in which the deceased has talked about in the past tense. And very often the Mass is envisaged as a celebration of the life of somebody. In other words, already in black and white, behind glass. Their history, their story to be told. And so you get all sorts of telltale comments be made. Their memory will never die. They will be alive wherever we remember them. And a whole load elsewhere of pagan bullshit, which has nothing to do with the faith. The moment you start talking all the time about somebody in the past tense, you have lost your faith. All right, maybe you just mislaid it. Like the car keys. Fair comment. Okay, it happens, it happens, it happens. Okay, we all have those moments. But there's a possibility that that's going to become more pronounced. We're looking at spiritual dementia. Yeah, that could become permanent. A general condition. He was, she was, they did, they did, they were. The, it's an, we'll always remember them. What the bloody hell use is that to them? You'll always remember them. So you're going to die like them. And after a generation or two, nobody will remember them. Unless somebody remembers them. Who doesn't die. That is our only hope. And if that is our only hope, then the whole drift, now that's obvious from, this is obvious from the ritual, but it's not obvious from the way we celebrate it. The whole drift of the funeral mass is prayer to God, the only one who can save, and the only one who can save and is also willing to save for the soul of the deceased. That is the central and dominating note of a funeral mass, and anything else is not Catholic and not Christian. I'm sorry. 
to go on like that. I'm beginning to think it was a big mistake. I take them for granted now like most priests. It was a big mistake to ever allow these eulogies. There was a tradition of graveside orations, which was perfectly acceptable, the panegyric, and indeed it was, it was venerable and highly respected, and a particular almost uh, kind of public speaking. That's gone. Now the whole thing is done in the church. It has to be done in comfort. Out of the rain. But the church is not a public space in the same sense. This is, this is a huge problem. The mass is not that kind of gathering. And you know what we've done? We have made, in Irish terms, all right, we have made the bar of the local pub an extension of the church. We might as well bring pints in with us into the church. Because what's going on is a sentimental recapitulation of the life of the deceased and not an expression of faith in the future and not a prayer for their souls. Now, I have nothing against a drink. But I remember a time at Wakes when, when you took a drink, you were offered a drink. If you accepted a drink, you said the Lord have mercy on the dead before you took a drop. This is symptomatic of where we are. We're, we're going to have to pull ourselves up here. We have to look at our burial rituals again. I wonder, because I, look, I do this. All priests have done it. We've all found the culture too strong for us. We've horse traded. You know, you can have, well, maybe the last, the recessional, you can have a, a, a what do you call it, a secular song there. I'm beginning to think we're wrong to be doing that. I really am. I'm beginning to think I, I'm beginning to think that there's no there are no half measures with this. And the minute you start to compromise, you've sold out. I'm sorry to say that. And I think we have sold out. You know? And so people are being carried out of the church to the strains of I don't know. Galway Bay, the Galway Shawl, the Fields of Athen Rye. Uh, the bowl teddy quill. It's not otherworldly. It's not supernatural. It doesn't have that tremendous beauty and dread that is that that are keynotes of great liturgy. And because of that, it can give no hope. It gives a superficial comfort. Right, a superficial comfort. But it does not kill the pain of the loss. And it does not address the massive philosophical question posed by the death of the beloved. So it effectively it does nothing of what it claims to do. Now it's as well that the mass works ex opere operato and that it doesn't depend on the mentality of the priest or the congregation. But that in itself is still very tragic if the congregation and perhaps the priest, perhaps the priest, most of the congregation are of such a mentality that what has happened is a celebration, a recapitulation, uh, a nostalgic overview of the life of the deceased. That is not worth a tuppenny curse. They might as well have taken them down to the graveside and buried them and got decently drunk and had a fight in the graveyard. That would at least connect us to our ancient ancestors and would have some dignity. I'm telling you, we have to look at the burial ceremonies again. We have to look at the Requiem Mass again because I think you can see in that a massive, in the, in the use of secular music, in the eulogy, in, in all these mementos that are being brought up, I think there's a massive failure of nerve. And I am complicit in this. I'm not here to just, just spit on what's being done or, or, or talk down to people or give out to them. I am, what am I doing? I am reflecting on 
on a, a what I, I regard as a very dangerous situation and my own part in it. I think it's time for change. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.